Hey everyone, this is George Kroos and welcome back to a very special episode of the Innovators Mindset podcast. And to be honest with you, I don't even know if I'd call it the Innovators Mindset podcast because it's not going to be me. I am going to turn this over to my friend, Megan Lawson, who just wrote a book for uh, my publishing company, my publish not company, company called Impress Books. And she just wrote this wonderful book called Legacy of Learning. And I, full disclosure, I... No, Megan, I've been, I've known her for years. I love her blog. I love her writing. And I encouraged her to write years ago. And she's kept up with it. And I just loved her writing. So I didn't feel the need to read it before it got out there. So once it came out, I bought my own copy. Uh, even though I could have got a free copy, but I bought it because I just wanted to get this in my hands. And I read the introduction outside in my reading spot. And I loved it. It was absolutely a powerful story, really compelling. And I read the whole book uh, probably in two sittings, uh, part of it outside and part of it on a plane. And she did such an amazing job. I'm so very proud of Megan. So I was reading the intro and as soon as I finished it, I text Megan, I said, I would love for you to actually just read the intro to, um, to my audience because I think it's a really powerful reminder of why we do what we do, but also gives that ray of hope that we can actually get to what we aspire to do when we first became educators. And as uh, I'm reading this book, the thing that I really loved about Megan's writing, she did such a wonderful job of really telling powerful stories and connecting really practical ideas. And it feels like such a timely book that I just wanted to share this with you all. So you can actually get a copy of the book in the description down below. And it would mean a lot to me, um, not only because it supports me, but I know it's going to be a really powerful book and people are going to love it. And I just wanted to share the introduction with you. I am going to be honest with you. I'm a little jealous of Megan right now because she does the best chapter titles Ever. And I'm like, wow, I wish I could do chapter titles like this. And every time I read one of her chapter titles, it was just uh, really powerful. I'm going to, I'm just going to pick one randomly. Uh, one of them she actually shares is popsicles and conga lights. And you're like, what does this have to do with education? And it just, it, she did such a good job because I'm like, I want to read what does popsicle and conga lines have to do with education? And then I get to the part I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. She did such a good job, and I'm jealous. I wish I had that skill. But I'm gonna let her. I'm gonna turn it over to Megan. Pick up a copy of Legacy of Learning. I would love for you just to take a moment to write in the comments and congratulate Megan, uh, whether you get the book or not. I'd love for you to get the book, obviously. But make sure you just take a moment. And if if you don't want to write in the comments, if you're listening somewhere else, hit her up on Twitter. Hit her up on Instagram. Uh, and her links there uh, are down below because I think it's just so nice. Like writing a book is daunting. It is terrifying. And putting yourself out of the world um, is something that is hard to do. And I'm proud of Megan for doing this. And so I would love for the people who listen to my podcast to show a little love with her because I know it, people do that for me all the time. And it would just be wonderful if you could reciprocate that for other people as well. When you give out to the world, uh, I, I swear that always comes back to you. So, so I'm going to turn over to Megan. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Megan Lawson. I think we've hit the time in the school year where things are starting to feel a little more heavy, we're starting to feel more tired. And, you know, as human beings, we're wired for connection. We're wired for joy. We're wired for learning. And one of the best ways to experience joy and learning and connection is through storytelling. And so I thought you might enjoy hearing the introduction to my book, Legacy of Learning, Teaching for Lasting Impact. Each educator's journey began in a different place. Some of us played school at home growing up. Some of us grew up with parents who were educators. Some of us had difficult school experiences and we wanted to become teachers so we could reinvent what school could be. In my case, I didn't want to be a teacher. I wanted to be a Broadway dancer and I wanted to study dance in college. My mom, Kim Lawson, 
A single parent was very practical and understood that I did not need a degree in dance in order to become a professional dancer. She also knew it was difficult to make it on Broadway. So she insisted that I earn a degree in a different field as my backup plan. Very quickly, my backup plan became my actual plan. I didn't love teaching at the start. You read that right. I learned through student teaching in a high school ELA classroom that this was going to be a lot of work. I learned that there was no applause for thoughtful lesson plans. I learned that grading papers took a lot of time outside the school day and that early mornings came back around fast. I learned to drink my coffee black. I learned a lot of things in my early years of teaching, but perhaps the most important lesson I learned was that this work matters in a big way. And something about that has kept me coming back. It's what's kept a lot of us coming back. It feels good to do work that matters so deeply. It feels good to matter in the lives of so many. And while I can finally say that I love our profession, there are a lot of times when I question whether it's all worth it. It seems like the work continues to become more complex, challenging, and exhausting. There are national shortages of educators. Many of my colleagues are telling their own children not to become teachers. Think about that. It's so difficult, and at times the conditions are so miserable that actual educators are keeping their own kids from becoming teachers because they want better for them. I want better for all of us, too. There's a lot of work to be done on the systems of school to make school a place where adults want to work every day and where kids want to learn. And in the meantime, that leaves us where? It leaves us trying to control what we can control. It leaves us trying to figure out how to do our personal best. It leaves us trying to figure out how to stay encouraged so we keep showing up for our students who so desperately need us, for a world that desperately needs us. Whenever I think about quitting, I think about Mrs. Bogus, my first grade teacher. I needed her more than I've ever needed a teacher. Because on February 12th, 1989, my dad lost his battle with leukemia. I can remember the day my mom came home from the hospital to tell us. She sat on my canopy bed and tried to find the words. My dad and I were very close. It was difficult to comprehend this terrible loss. I flew off the bed, ran to the window, and in a fit of grief, hot tears running down my face, I managed to rip the blinds off. While my body was out of control with this grief, my mind suddenly became clear. I turned to my mom, looked her square in the eyes, and asked, Will we have enough food to eat? During those formative years of my life, my mom had stayed home to raise us. I understood that my dad went to work to provide for us, and now that he was gone, I wondered how we would survive without him. When it was time for me to go back to school, it was hard to imagine letting my mom out of my sight. I can still remember her pulling the car up in front of my elementary school. I can remember the heaviness in my body. I can remember the fear I felt. It was going to take Herculean strength to pull that door handle and walk out the door away from her. Until I saw them. My classmates. They were standing at the front door with their faces pressed up against the glass, waving and cheering for me to come into the school. It was as if Mrs. Bogus knew exactly what I needed at that moment and had rolled out the red carpet for my arrival. She could have tried to play it cool and make it normal, but she knew this wasn't normal and that I needed some encouragement. This was a bold move that turned out to be the right move, and for the rest of that year, she had my back. Over and over again. There were times when I needed a lot of grace, which she gave to me. She was exactly what I needed during that difficult time. I'm so glad Mrs. Bogus showed up. I'm so glad she didn't quit. I still get emotional thinking about the impact she had on me. That's legacy work right there. I reached out to Mrs. Bogus while writing this book. I was surprised to learn that she lived in the neighborhood where I grew up, the same neighborhood I lived in when she was my first grade teacher. I took my time to carefully write my words on a card to explain just how much she meant to me. Imagine my joy when a couple of weeks later, she replied, her card filled with artfully written cursive letters and her adult account of our time together. She wrote, Hi, Megan. I'm so sorry it has taken me so long to respond to your lovely note. My mail was stopped as my husband and I were on a cruise. 
Brandy, my daughter, told me that you had written me. I'm honored that you have included me in your upcoming book. How special is that? I remember you in your first grade year well. You have been telling me for quite a while that your daddy would be coming home from the hospital on Valentine's Day. If memory serves me correctly, he passed away either on or near Valentine's Day. My heart broke for you. I attended his funeral. How sad he was so young. I thought, how are we going to help this sweet little girl get through this? The only thing I knew to do was to make your classroom a safe, caring, loving place to come to each day. The other children, even at six years old, understood what we needed to do to take care of you and to make school a happy place for you to be. It warms my heart to hear from you and that we handled it in the right way. I remember seeing your dance competitions a few years later as Brandy danced too. You were a talented little dancer and I was so proud of you. As for our neighborhood, we have lived in the same house for over 50 years. I knew that you lived in the same neighborhood when you were in my class. You were just too young to realize it. It is wonderful to see that you are happy in your personal and professional life. Hearing from former students in a note like yours makes my 30 years of teaching worthwhile. Love always, Linda Bogus. P.S. Let me book, know when your book comes out. I was amazed by the details she remembered, and it was powerful to hear the perspective of an adult who knew me during such a difficult time in my childhood. I noticed in her response that she mentioned not being sure what to do at first. Such a relatable feeling as an educator. We are often unsure if we are making the right decisions. When she decided that the only thing she needed to do was to make the classroom a safe, caring, loving place to come to each day, it was exactly what I needed most. I'm so grateful that she followed her teacher gut and encouraged my classmates to join her in supporting me. We have instincts as educators. Sometimes we question those instincts because there are many voices telling us what we should do. Often the feeling comes to us in a whisper, but it almost always sends us in the right direction if we can tune into it. Mrs. Bogus's letter was a kind reminder to trust our gut. Additionally, she trusted the class to make the classroom a happy place for me, and I felt that from them. We are never too young to make a difference. Our students can make a positive difference in our classrooms and schools today. Finally, she shared the credit. She explained, it warms my heart to hear from you that we handled it in the right way. Whether we're growing a positive culture in the classroom, a school, or a district, Sharing the credit is an effective strategy for building a sense of belonging and ownership. In a short letter, Mrs. Bogus managed to give us a masterclass in classroom culture. It doesn't have to be complicated to be impactful. You have deeply impacted students too. Some of them will tell you about your impact and many may never tell you, but you are leaving a legacy. You are giving others the strength to move forward the strength to believe in themselves, the strength to make this world a better place. Knowing this makes being an educator so meaningful. But we don't have to suffer while we make this kind of impact. In fact, the more we can live well and be well, the more our impact will grow. When we can discern what really matters to us and what matters less, we can give more energy in the places that matter most. When we are clear about what matters most for learners, we are more likely to inspire the best in students and colleagues. Inside each of us is the educator and human we always wanted to be. I hope this book helps you find your way forward because this world needs you now more than ever. With some small moves and intentionality, you can live a really good life while making a lasting impact on learners. As an aside, I had a difficult time with the title for this book, as many of those closest to me can attest. During a conversation with George Kuros, we uncovered that my struggle came from an immense care for educators and my overwhelming appreciation for their work, which matters so deeply. Educators spend much of their lives nurturing the hearts and minds of learners. They deserve to have their hearts and minds nurtured too. I hope this book is affirming energizing, and thought-provoking because the legacy of educators lives on in each of us, past, present, and future. 
Thank you for picking up this book and for all you do to support the growth and development of others. And thank you for listening today. You're doing better than you think.